Good morning, and if you're joining us today for Resurrection Sunday, we are so excited to be able to celebrate that today is Resurrection Sunday. There is a, a wonderful way of greeting. We have a special way of greeting. So I know that we can't do this greeting face to face because of our lockdown. There might be people around you today that you can greet, but I'm going to ask you to kind of let's make this greeting and let's hollow out there about our faith. And the way we do it is this. We say, Christ is risen, and someone else says hallelujah, or Christ is risen indeed. And like, you maybe want to send a WhatsApp, you maybe want to post something on Facebook, you maybe want to say to us right now as you're joining us live, won't you say Christ is risen indeed as we say Christ is risen. Okay, now it's, we, we, we come to this moment of celebrating and worshiping. So won't you join me now as we pray and as we worship God in spirit and in truth. But let's pray together. And so, Lord God, we, we thank you that we, we can come through Holy Week. We can move through the shadow of the cross. We can move past the trials and the tribulations and the accusations and the betrayal and the denial and the regret and we can reach a place and literally, God, we can exhale. Lord, for us, as we gather in South Africa, for us as a nation, we've been in lockdown for 17 days. And, and as we've journeyed through your passages, we, we know that today reminds us that you call us to be unified. And we thank you, God, that Christians all around the world have found a way of together declaring Christ is risen. And so we want to thank you, God, that even in the midst of pain, we have seen through this Easter experience a new way of being. And so as we come now to celebrate and to worship you, we pray, Lord, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. For Christ, our King, is risen. Amen. Let's join together as we worship. And kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fire. Battles, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb, and every knee will bow before Him. the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Here we go! Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 
can stop the Lord Almighty? Who 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 can stop the Lord? Here we go! Come on! Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. Slain for the sin of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb, and every knee will bow before him. We honor you, Lord, we lift you up, and we thank you, God, that you are a God who saves, that we can place our faith in you and know, Lord, that you are good and powerful and mighty to save, Lord. Lord, we declare our faith right now in these challenging times, God. We choose to worship you. We choose to put you on the altar of our praise, God. Lord, I believe in God, our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God, three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus.
in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And so we have just made a very powerful statement of faith that we believe in the resurrection we are guaranteed an eternal destiny. Now as we receive the offering, let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as we bring our gifts, we thank you that you are the light of the world. We thank you especially on this day that the stone has been rolled away, that the tomb is empty, and we thank you for new hope. The glory and the promise of this day brings us joy. It brings us peace. Christ, our risen Savior, is here with us. We are blessed abundantly. And so today, Lord Jesus, we sing triumphant cries to heaven. The King is alive. Accept now these gifts that we place before you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we will just allow some time as you process your gift. The details are being reflected on the screen. Please take this time to prayerfully make your gift to God. Thank you. He is risen indeed. Amen. Glory be to God. Happy Easter Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday uh, to you and to your family this Resurrection Sunday. We rejoice and celebrate uh, even in the midst of lockdown and even in the midst of, of uh, times of, of uh, adversity, uh, times of physical separation, uh, times of uh, anguish and worry. But God has got this. Uh, and today is a reminder of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that in fact Jesus and God has power and victory over death, over illness, um, and, and he indeed uh, is the victor. Uh, so for today, as part of this Resurrection Sunday, um, I'm going to be reading a, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gospel um, as, we, as we hear about the resurrection. Let's pray together before I read the scriptures. Gracious God, indeed, we celebrate. We celebrate today, Lord God, because Jesus Christ is indeed risen from the dead. We are grateful, God, because today across the world, millions and millions of Christ followers celebrate this day, the day that the tomb was empty, 
the day that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, rose from the dead. Amen. Uh, the scripture that I'm wanting to, to read from comes from uh, Luke chapter 24, and uh, just a few verses, uh, verse 1 to 12 uh, from Luke chapter 24. So uh, if you have a Bible nearby and you'd like to, to follow it, I invite you to do that uh, now. Luke 24, uh, and it speaks about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Luke 24 from verse 1 through to verse 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the woman because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is God's word to us today. And so we have this incredible resurrection story filled with uh, beauty, filled with uh, an amazing uh, way in which God pronounces to the world he has overcome. And so I want to just, on this Resurrection Sunday, just speak uh, just briefly about the resurrection and what it means for me and what it means for you. And there's just three things I want to say. Firstly, it's about His promise. I, I love the fact that for God, His promises are true. They are yes and amen. Uh, the, the, you know, throughout the, the gospel and even through the Old Testament, the death, the birth, death, and resurrection um, is spoken about time and time again. You see, what God promises comes to fruition. God promises things over our lives. And this Resurrection Sunday, we live under the promises of God. And we know that His promises for you and me are true. And, and they are there for us. And they build us. And they restore us. And they sustain us. Jesus says, uh, and, and the scriptures speak about so, so many promises from God. And I'm wondering if you and I are living a resur resurrection life because we, we, are, we are fulfilled by the promises of God. And God's promises are fulfilled through us do you, you know that God promises us in Romans 8 verse 38 and 39 that nothing will separate us from the love of God it's a promise that he makes to us when Paul writes to the church in Rome that nothing will ever separate us from the love of God uh, and and you and I need to remember that promise especially as you remember the darkness of of Friday and about uh, the, the death of Christ and it's our sins that drove him uh, to the cross. But in Romans uh, 8 verse 38 and 39, it says that there is nothing. I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is found in Jesus Christ our Lord. And that love, that love claims you and I by faith. It's a promise that's made over our life. You know, a promise that you and I are never alone. And uh, for those who have been living in, in isolation, the word alone um, has never been so profound in our lives at the moment as we've lived lives uh, that seem to be alone. And, and, and even though in some cases we would have had family, or it's, there is a new sense um, of aloneness. And I remember when the, when the 21 days started of, of lockdown, certainly here in South Africa, um, I know one of the things that I posted on my social media was for the for the introverts to please pray for the extroverts because uh, for us that are extroverts and that to be able to be under lockdown is, um, is something else. Uh, but a reminder, a promise that we are never alone, that when our hearts are broken, God is there. When our lives, when we feel lost, God is there. When, when no one else understands us, the creator of our heart, the comfort of the Holy Spirit is there with us. When we, when we felt isolated or rejected, we remember that Christ promises over us that he will never leave us. It's a promise 
Um, and if the promise of the resurrection is true as it is, as we understand that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, then so are all the other promises that God has for us. Uh, God has promised us eternal life. He's promised us a home in heaven. In, um, in John 3, 3.16, he reminds us of, of, of God's love the world and, and how he came to us and how we are promised salvation. Um, we, we, we know the promises of, of God's forming us. Uh, and, and, he wants, and he knows us intimately, the promises of who we are in the eyes of God, the promises of, of, of Scripture in Jeremiah 29, that God's plan is for your life and my life to prosper. He wants to prosper us and not harm us. Uh, the promise that, that, that the risk and the call that God is calling us to is, 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 is worth every moment. Uh, friends, there are so many promises over your life. Um, and, and over my life, and so many people um, know a bit about my story and that about of my adoption. And uh, when I was adopted, and, and when my parents, um, you know, picked me up out of the um, out of the the cot in that when uh, in the in the home that I was in, uh, and my mom and dad often told me of how they they held me and and how they made promises over my life, you know, um, how they'll bring me up in a in a God in a Christian home and how they will uh, love me and how they will care for me and how they will protect me. Uh, and all the rest of it, you know, and I, and I always say part of the testimony of my life, if, if my earthly parents can make those type of promises over me could you, and then keep their promises, by the way, um, how much more will our heavenly parent look after us and, and fulfill his promises over our life? And the Resurrection Sunday is about the fulfillment of God's promise to humanity, but that God has also made these promises for you and for me. And Resurrection Sunday and the promise of the resurrection is a reminder that God keeps his word. Uh, this, the second thing about Resur Resurrection Sunday is about his power, not just his promises, his power. Uh, the, this, this power, this, as you read the story of, of the resurrection, you become aware of the power of God, uh, of great is he that is in us than he that is in the world, uh, the power of the resurrection. I mean, uh, just uh, sometimes that, you know, we've read the story so many times that we, we sometimes lose touch and lose focus with, with the reality of, of what's happened in the story and, and, and how powerful this is and the, and the power of the resurrection. Uh, just for a moment, the power, just, uh, there's just so many things that go into the story. Uh, his death, uh, the bringing down of the body, the, the, the tomb, uh, putting the body in the tomb, um, rolling the stone away, putting the God. So there's not just the physical aspect of, of locking Jesus in the tomb um, and then rem you know, uh, getting rid of the guards and rolling the stone away <laughs> and all the rest, but actually the power that lies in, 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 in the transformation from death to life. And by the way, God's greatest work, God's greatest work took place in a graveyard. God's greatest work took place in a graveyard because God has the power over life and death and the power of the resurrection. Then it's not just all the physical, uh, physical things that happen of rolling away the stone, the gods and all the rest of it, but to actually bring Jesus from death to life to be resurrected from the dead and to understand the power of that and the power that is, that is in that moment, this God of power who can impart that power, that power lives in you and me. Do you know that Jesus said to his disciples that those who come after him will be able to do even greater things that he has done? Friends, why is it that we aim so low? Why, why is it that we are, we see, I mean, we worship a resurrected God, the resurrected Jesus Christ. Why is it that we aim so low? Why is it that our, our target, why is it that we seem to be uh, floundering and, and tripping and falling and, and um, thinking that God, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking about how, how people have freaked out about, for us in South Africa, the 21 days of isolation. And in some ways, our ideas about God and our thinking about God is so minute and just so small and just and i'm sure that sometimes god must be this god who created the heavens and the earth this god who raised jesus from the dead how is it that we can think so small about god we are freaking out about 21 days of lockdown or we're freaking out about whatever the case may be and just for a moment in this moment of resurrection sunday can we lift our eyes from the ground and look up into heaven and understand and claim the power of god the power of the resurrection and that power lives in you and me. And for me, Resurrection Sunday is, a, is, a, is about a day of, of a call for us stopping 
to stop us from being feeble, from stop us being, being weak in a sense. And I, and I don't know if Jesus calls for us to be weak. And I, I mean, I get that and I understand that. But it feels like we've lent so much to the, to the weak and to the humble and, to the, and all the rest of it that somehow in all of this, we've forgotten about the power of the resurrection and the power of God that lives within us. The power of the resurrection. I mean, you know, when I think about it, I think about the power of creation, of how bold and dynamic and powerful the creation was that we read in Genesis 1 and, and how that came about. And for me, I think about the power of the resurrection. I think about the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think about the power when Jesus Christ comes back again. Powerful statements of who God is in the resurrection. There's the promise, there's the power, and lastly, <laughs> oh, friends, uh, I don't even know where to begin uh, in, in, this, in this last thing because there's not only the power, there's not only, there's not only the, 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 the promise and the power, but there is also, friends, there is also this one final point which is so critically important, and that is the purpose. I mean, the whole idea of Jesus Christ um, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ was so that we would have purpose. I, I, I love the fact that, um, you know, do you notice that no one hung around the tomb, the empty tomb? I mean, I don't know, there, there, there's a small part of me that, I don't know, there's a small part of me that, um, that if I'd got to the empty tomb, I, that I'd want to chill there for a bit. I, 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 I'd want to spend a bit more time in the tomb, checking out the tomb, um, almost being around that miracle for a moment. Because you see, when you're in that moment of miracle, just think about this. When you're in that moment of miracle, it's like almost in your mind you're thinking, if I leave here, the place of the miracle, um, if I leave it, then somehow the, the miracle is going to lose its moment or its power or whatever the case may be. And so for me, I'm almost like wanna, I want to stay around the fire. <laughs> I want to stay around the, the resurrection place. I want to stay around there. I want to see what else is going to be happening there. But you notice how all of them run. They run to tell, run to, and to, I love that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I love that. I love the fact that, that, the, 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 that this purpose, you know, is, is to go, is to, is to, we can't stay in one place. The, you, you and I can't hang around at the empty tomb all day. We, we have to go and spread the news that he is alive. And we spread it through saying things and we spread it through doing things. Uh, and you know, for the rest of the time, when you, when you talk about the book of Acts, which is the acts of the apostles, in other words, the doing, the physical acts of the apostles, they went from the, from the resurrection, a place of resurrection, to acts, to doing, to, to, to purpose, you know? Uh, and, and that's beautiful. And, and there's a story within the story, you know, because there was this, there was this uh, fisherman called Peter. Uh, yeah, he has Peter uh, called uh, by Jesus, uh, and, and, and he has, leads this turbulent, turbulent life, and, and Jesus says to him at one stage, your name is Peter, and, I'm gonna build, and you're, you're the rock, and I'm going to build my church on on, on you, on the rock. I mean, could you imagine that for a moment? To, to next minute being Peter in the courtyard who denies Jesus three times. Remember that? Just before his, just recently, just before this moment of resurrection. And here again, you have Peter at the tomb running. Uh, at least he went to the tomb and now running back again with a purpose. And, and we know for Peter what happened with his life. Uh, you know, and for me, that is good news. You know, because sometimes I felt, Jesus, you can, you can, you can trust me uh, and you can build something out of my life. <laughs> but there's also been times where I've denied him more than three times. And things that I've said and things that I've done. But I've also run back to the tomb. And, and, and then run with purpose, with joy in my life and purpose in my life of knowing that, that Jesus has called me to something, to a great purpose. And that's not just for me in a role as a pastor or Samilo or Jackie or anyone else in their role as a pastor. We all have a purpose. We all have a greater purpose. 
And we can't just hang around the tomb, the, the empty tomb, because as glorious as the empty tomb is, that's not where life happens. That's not where ministry happens. That not, no one's purpose is to hang around the empty tomb. Our purpose is far greater than that. Our purpose is far greater than that. And one thing that the virus has done for us, one thing around this horrific pandemic that has taken so many lives, and, and maybe by now taking even more lives, somehow it's recalibrated us. You know, somehow it's, we've looked at our own purposes and we've wondered, you know, what have I been doing? I want to invite you this morning. It's time to leave the tomb. We've experienced it. We've loved it. It's been beautiful. But it's time to leave. Because we have a purpose. This Resurrection Sunday, hang on to God's promises. Feel His power. And go towards your purpose that He has called you to. Amen. Let's pray together. And so God, thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Lord God, that indeed Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He's alive and he's alive in us. We claim the promises that you have made over our life to be yes and amen. We have a sense of your power. And now we go with purpose. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends, uh, let's close off this time together in a time of worship. Thanks to, uh, to Greg and his team this, uh, this Easter as they have led us in worship. Um, they have just done the most incredible work. Uh, and I'm wondering from wherever it is that you're watching us uh, now that if you could give Greg and the team just a, a, a wave or a clap or a something uh, to them. Thanks, you, you guys have been amazing. So they're going to close off this time of worship now with a final worship song. Thanks, team. Yeah, I just want to say, I miss gathering with you, and I cannot wait to physically be able to gather with all of you again and worship together in song uh, in the same place. But I'm so glad to be on this journey with you. And this next song is a very simple song, lyrically. It just says, this is how I fight my battles. And what we are saying is, as believers, as people of faith, we are choosing to fight our battles by worshiping God. That's the simple truth. It doesn't need to be complicated for it to be powerful. And uh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but the truth is I'm surrounded by you. So right now, with every bit of faith in you, please... Please declare this out with us. So we're going to sing and play with all of our hearts now as we, as we declare this at the close of Resurrection Sunday. Just stand up wherever you are right now at home and just sing it out. Here we go. This is how I fight my battles 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 Like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how come on a little bit louder. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I catch okay, the voices go. This is how I fight my battles. 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 And that is how we fight our battles through an empty tomb. We just thank you for joining us for Easter 2020. We will never forget this Easter. We move out of this place of worship knowing that the God we worship leaves us with an empty tomb. Not that we get stuck in that, but that we run away from because God has a plan and a purpose through his promises and his power for our lives. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit hold you in the power of the resurrected Christ. Amen.